I'm Brian McAdoo. I'm an Associate Professor of Earth and Climate Sciences here at the Nicholas School of Environment at Duke University. My name is Ryan Emanuel, and I'm an Associate Professor here in the Nicholas School of the Environment at Duke. This semester in the Division of Earth and Climate Sciences, I'm teaching a class taking a look at three different resources in the state that can help us with our own sustainability and making us a bit more reliant on local resources. One of the aspects of this course, which I think is really important, is actually getting stories from people in the environment. We go to communities here in Durham to learn about how they're navigating their resilience in the face of climate change. I'm a water scientist. Another part of my research focuses on environmental justice, the fair treatment and meaningful involvement of all people in environmental decision-making processes. I'm a Lumbee Indian, so I come from the Lumbee tribe. Lumbee people have a very special connection to our river. It's our ancestral home. We've lived there since time immemorial, so it's a region that's very dear to me. Ms. Delphine Sellers at the Catawba Trail Farm has chosen to really work on getting community members from the city out into the countryside so they can experience nature and actually work to something that can sustain their own community. The fact that the Catawba Trail Farm is able to reclaim land and bring it back to the community, especially Durham's black community, is a critical way of empowering themselves to gain access to a food resource that they've been removed from for generations now. Stagville, Horton Grove, Snow Hill Plantation, it's all part of the same place. We go into the field and we actually get to talk to people, we actually get to touch the soil and we get to see and smell the water, light bulbs go off. And then the information they bring back to the classroom to continue our conversations is a whole different level of learning than just reading it in a book. But also the community needs to get something from this. We need to be able to share our perspectives on this and what we learn from our experience with them. Tribal governments in the coastal plain of North Carolina are actually struggling with a number of different issues simultaneously. Yes, there are issues of pollution and climate change, but at the same time, there are intertwining issues of public health, housing, and food security. We go to the field and we visit with communities because it's critical to hear this message firsthand until you actually hear from the people who are charged with making these really difficult decisions. It's incredibly difficult to understand, and I believe you have to put yourself in someone else's shoes to the extent that you can, especially if you're in a position of decision-making power or authority. When you consider the myriad of problems we're facing in today's world, a lot of them really do circle around having a fundamental understanding of how Earth systems work so that we come up with solutions that are more sustainable and more viable. And we need to get their stories for the community firsthand. From doing that, we can learn a lot to inform our solutions. And without these inputs, our solutions aren't going to be as effective. Graduates of our program and other professional programs are going to be filling roles where they're going to be called to make sometimes important decisions that impact the lives of marginalized people, uh, vulnerable people, um, and others around the world. I'm developing a new class that's going to focus on environmental justice theory and practice. One of the interests that I have is thinking about ways that as we address these grand challenges, we can make sure that indigenous voices and indigenous perspectives and indigenous knowledge systems are deeply woven into the fabric of our solutions.